Robert Jobson was invited onto GB News where he and Nigel Farage bombarded Prince Harry and Meghan Markle for their Oprah Winfrey interview. Mr. Jobson took particular offense to the suggestion the royal family were racist amid claims there were concerned conversations about baby Archie's skin color. The pair did not hold back in their condemnation of the Sussexes as Mr. Farage said the couple were able to exploit the situation by getting their story out first before the royal family could respond. Mr. Jobson appeared on GB News on Mr. Farage's evening show and discussed the allegations that were made during the Oprah Winfrey interview. He explained, I'm getting a feeling when I'm doing a lot of work in America they genuinely believe some of this racist bunkum. Mr. Farage agreed and said the Sussexes had a mover advantage as they could get their story out first without the royals being able to respond. Mr. Jobson replied, I mean really, the work that the Queen's done with the Commonwealth and the Prince of Wales, has done, a huge amount of work. And to even implicate them as racist is ludicrous. Mr. Farage said he hated it and also disliked how close the Oprah Winfrey interview was to the Duke of Edinburgh being in hospital. Mr. Jobson gave his take and said, I was shocked, I thought it was deeply unpleasant in the way that it was handled. I said on air I thought it was a bit like someone burning the American flag, what they were doing is burning out the British flag. And the nonsense that was talked about, you know, like they had a secret marriage, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the holy man of the land actually came out and said it was a lie. You had other things in there that were just nonsense. Soon after the interview was aired, it was revealed many of the UK headlines attacking Meghan and Harry used in the program were in fact from American publications. Meghan also claimed she was unable to get help for her mental health with many questioning why Harry, a mental health champion who has received help in the past, did not help out his wife. There were also discrepancies between Harry claiming he was financially cut off from the royal family in the first quarter of 2020 despite records showing Prince Charles funded the couple until summer. The Sussexes claim there is no contradiction as Harry was referring to the financial quarter rather than the calendar quarter. Mr. Jobson added, I thought that Oprah more than anybody let herself down by pulling them to account. Mr. Farage added there were moments where Harry contradicted some of the things Meghan said in the first half. An updated edition of Harry and Meghan biography Finding Freedom made a string of fresh claims last night that are likely to trigger debate about the state of their relationship with the royal family. A leaked version of the epilogue claimed the couple had considered naming the royal they alleged had made a racist comment about their son, Archie, that some royals were quietly pleased the Duchess of Sussex missed Prince Philip's funeral and that Prince William was furious about their interview with Oprah. The new edition, due to be released on August 31, the 24th anniversary of Princess Diana's death, also said the Sussexes had no regrets about quitting their royal roles and that Meghan found her explosive Oprah interview cathartic and liberating. Buckingham Palace did not comment on the book's contents when it first emerged last year and last night a spokesman declined to comment on the latest claims. Lawyers for Harry and Meghan have distanced themselves from finding freedom, describing it as unauthorized, and saying the authors did not speak for our clients and seemed to rely on unnamed sources. The book's authors meanwhile, have said that Finding Freedom is independent and unauthorized and have also claimed that the couple did not speak to them about its contents. Last night, the Daily Mail contacted HarperCollins, the publisher, for comment but did not receive a reply. Meghan plunged the monarchy into crisis after telling Oprah Winfrey that an unnamed royal had expressed concern about Archie's skin before he was born. The epilogue reveals that a source told authors Omid Scobie and Carolyn Duran that the Sussexes have considered naming the family member, but had ultimately decided not to. It also claimed that sources close to the Sussexes had said that the royal family's reaction to the allegations made by the couple was not positive. The source told the authors that there had to be some acknowledgement about what the Sussexes went through for there to be progress. The criticism came after a carefully worded statement from the Queen following the controversial Oprah interview, which expressed concern for the couple but insisted that some recollections may vary. In the updated edition, the authors write that the unaddressed allegations have continued to threaten the royal family's image around the world and could no doubt bring down the monarchy. Sources told the authors that the Duke of Cambridge was said to be furious after the interview because private family matters were being discussed in the public domain. Days later, Prince William firmly told reporters that the royals were very much not a racist family but, according to the book, he is unlikely to ever comment on the claims again. The updated book claimed that although emotions within the royal family were still raw over the Oprah interview, it quoted a source close to the couple saying the couple's intervention could force people to talk in order for the healing to begin. The book details how family tensions were put aside after Prince Philip died in April. The Duchess of Sussex, who was pregnant with daughter Lilibet, 
was absent from the funeral after doctors refused her clearance to fly. Authors Scobie and Durand wrote that Meghan had hoped to return with Harry but added, in truth, several members of the royal family are understood to have been quietly pleased that Meghan stayed in California because they didn't want a circus or, commented a senior royal source, the Duchess creating a spectacle. They also claimed that the funeral was surreal for Harry. They cited a source suggesting that saying goodbye to his grandfather was made even more difficult by being with family he hadn't seen in over a year while the world watched. The leaked epilogue claimed that Harry and Prince Charles, were only on light speaking terms in the lead-up to the funeral but that the pair chatted after the service at a small gathering at Windsor Castle. The book alleged that though there were many unresolved issues, the funeral had allowed for steps forward in the healing process for the pair. It also detailed how Harry and William had at least two further conversations after the funeral beyond the chat they were seen having as they left St. George's Chapel in Windsor. It added that Harry was also able to spend time with the Queen with a source saying, her life of duty and service is one of the many ways in which she has inspired him to also serve. The new version of the book claimed Harry and Meghan felt courtiers were still trying to undermine them after Meg's it by leaking information about them, including allegations that Meghan bullied staff. The book pointed to allegations, which appeared in The Times in March ahead of the Oprah interview, from royal aides claiming Meghan had faced a complaint she bullied staff, driving out two personal assistants and undermining the confidence of a third member. The Duchess denies the claims and Scobie and Durand said the attempt to discredit Meghan by those who used to be in the couple's inner circle served as a reminder to the Sussexes that they had made the right decision to leave. The authors wrote, What has continued to be troubling for the couple, more than a year after their decision, is knowing that courtiers inside the institution are still appearing to actively undermine Harry and Meghan by deliberately leaking information to discredit them. The book also accused courtiers of lying to the press over Meghan and Harry's wishes about Archie being made a prince. Meghan had suggested to Oprah that senior royals plotted to ensure Archie would never have a title or adequate security. The book claimed that palace aides were actually instructed to brief the press that the couple did not want a title for Archie. It said that in reality, the couple did want the option, given that it would provide their son with a level of security that only comes with a title. The authors added, the differential treatment the couple felt had been bestowed upon their son was a major sting to Harry and Meghan. But long-standing rules, laid down by George V mean that the title of HRH passes only to the children of a sovereign and their grandchildren through the male line, meaning Archie will be given a title when his grandfather, Prince Charles, becomes king. Despite the fallout from Megxit and the couple's explosive Oprah interview, the book claims that the Sussexes have no regrets. A friend of Meghan told the authors that she found her interview with Oprah cathartic. The friend added that all the things she had kept to herself were been too afraid to say she felt safe to finally share. It was liberating. The authors also offered a new take on Harry's financial situation in the run-up to their departure from the UK, saying if the couple had not had Harry's inheritance from his mother, they wouldn't have survived. Harry told Oprah his family literally cut me off financially in the first quarter of 2020 and he went for the multi-million pound Netflix and Spotify deals to pay for his security. The book also detailed how Harry had been denied permission to lay a wreath at the Cenotaph Last Remembrance Sunday because he was no longer a frontline royal. The Duke of Sussex spent 10 years in the military but lost his three honorary military titles including Captain General of the Royal Marines after stepping down as a senior royal last year along with his wife Meghan Markle. Harry commissioned a wreath but it was left in its box at a branch of the Royal British Legion in Kent, which, according to a source, left Harry feeling saddened and disappointed. The source told the authors, 10 years of service and a lifetime commitment to the military community and this is how it's been acknowledged by his family.'